Well, what is going on YouTube? Welcome back to A Therapeutic Edge. Hey, it's really nice to have you here. Hey, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and the like button and all the various button buttons. Uh, I have something new from uh, the folks at Asher Knives on the table. Now, I've had a number of Asher Knives. I've had the Nomad, I've got the, the Spiro, sort of OG Spiro here. Um, this is a personal favorite, sort of budget-friendly, easy carry. I just love the design. So when he mentioned that he was making a new Spiro in uh, full tie, I said, okay, let's check that out. And I'm glad that I did. Now, these dropped uh, last week, and then there was supposed to be another drop on Wednesday, but he had some QC problems, and his response to that was to pull the knives and see if he could get the parts or get them rectified So before he released them to the public, which is 100% the right way to go. Interesting, I have watched... Asher knives grow uh, from a company that made well their first generation of knives where he had some problems. Then he kind of got it figured out. And then he's come forward with great knife after great knife after great knife. Um, he's always been a really straight shooter. So I was really happy to get this on the table. Let's start with the thing that most people care about, price. This, of course, is a fat... No, I'm just kidding. These are 125 bucks. <laughs> You get bearings, you get full tie construction, you get S35VN, you get great action, lovely deep carry pocket clip. As you can see, it's a frame lock. The action on this knife is superb. Uh, it does have uh, this sort of half width, or half length fuller, which you can easily spidey flick the knife open. This is definitely a user slash knife nut sort of knife. It's got all of the cool features that leans into all the things people really enjoy. Uh, these come in a variety of different colors, but only here. You can get different sort of inlays around the pivot. Now, of course, you guys know me, so I went with black, but they have a blue one and some other colors. It's got a really nice back spacer with a uh, lanyard tube built into it, a lanyard post, excuse me. I don't lanyard, but, you know, you might. <clears throat> um... It's a different animal than its sort of older brother here. Um, both are S35VN. Um, both have, you know, this is a tie on this side. But this is definitely a new generation of knife. Um, feels a little better. It's a little bigger. Not much, but just a little bit. Um, yet either one of these is fantastic. Uh, I waited because I like the thumb studs on this gen here. So an opportunity to get another thumb stud opener from him made me really happy. Um, this one does not have the Asher Knives pivot. He's come a long way with that, as you can see. And at 125 bucks. Now I say that, people are like, that's a lot of money. Well, it is, but this is S35VN and all titanium. This is S35VN and all titanium. Well, okay, and mostly titanium. This does have the bog oak inlay. Uh, the Altai version of this, which is the Sebenza 31, is $550. This is $125. Now, am I saying that this knife is a direct competitor to the Sebenza? I'm not. There are things about this knife that are exquisitely done that you're not going to get in a $125 knife. But I will tell you that you are definitely punching out of your weight class with the Tai Spiro here. It is really comfortable. The blade, this drop point blade is really, really good for your everyday carry needs. It's got an exceptionally deep carry clip, as you can see. It's actually deeper than the knife. Now, that may not be everybody's favorite thing. I get that. Um, but I like the way that it looks better than the OGs, right? And it's deep carry for real, as opposed to this one, which is deep carry sort of. I was and remain Thoroughly impressed with this knife uh, from the moment I got it. Now, I ordered this. Um, I don't generally chase his stuff. Some of you may already know. Uh, his drops tend to sell out really quickly, which is more power to him. <clears throat> but on the day that these dropped, he said on Instagram that there were more coming. And so I reached out and I said, hey, man, I want one. And so he sent me an invoice and I paid for it. Yay. Um, and I'm glad that I did. It, having expensive knives around is cool. I have a fairly expensive collection at this point. But having a really good set of cutting tools that 
don't break the bank means that you've got stuff around that you can loan to people if you need to. If something happens, it's not the end of the world. And yet you're not suffering when it comes to quality. I, this is a really great knife. Let's talk about it a little bit, shall we? Um, <clears throat> let's do some basic specs. You are looking at looks like three and an eighth inches of cutting on uh, three and a quarter inches overall of S35VN. My experience with his S35VN is that it is good as any of the S35 that I've had over the years. Uh, it holds an edge really well. It's very rust stain resistant. It's very well done. I enjoy it. The grip area from behind that swell, you're looking at three and just about three and three quarters. You know, if you, I hold it about there, right? Leave a little room at the tail of the knife. Overall, we're coming in at seven. We don't include the pocket clip. We're coming in at seven and a half, which makes this a mid-size knife. Um, small for me, but lately I've been really enjoying smaller knives, which is very cool. So this thing is perfectly suited. Um, the hell did I just do with the... There it is. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> its older brother here uh, has got almost a saber grind, right? It's got a it's got a it's got a tall grind, but it's got this big flat. This is basically I mean, it has a little bit of flat, but it's got a taller blade, so it comes down to a better edge, at least it's been my experience so far. Whereas this one did not have a sharpening choil. Uh, this one has a really nice sharpening choil at the base of the plunge, which is really well done. So we made the blade a little taller to make room for that sharpening choil. Beyond that, the ergonomics are very similar. If you've had one of these and liked it, you're going to love this. It's a little bit bigger, as you can see. Not much, but just a little bit. Closed length on the Spiro tie thumb stud. Coming in at four and a... Four and an eighth. Yeah, four and an eighth. And, of course, the closed profile is really good. Right? Now, it is a little over an inch and a quarter this way, but... There's nothing on this side of the knife to bang into stuff in your pocket, which is a really nice feature. I can you tell I like it. <laughs> I really do. It's also been fun, as I said, to watch his knife journey, right? And to land here in what is probably just about the perfect user design is really cool, right? There's nothing about this knife that would lend it to a specific task, but it is built really well for most tasks. Let's do some size comparisons, stuff you may or may not be familiar with. I've already had it on the table, and for those of you that know, here it is against the full-size Sebenza, the 31. As you can see, it's a little bit smaller than the Sebenza. On a more reasonable and rational note, here it is against the uh, Bug Out. And it's bigger than the Bug Out, but not much. Right? Very similar uh, in overall dimensions. It's just taller and a little heavier. Of course, since it's titanium, it would be. Um, if you like the bug out as a using tool because of the long flat and then the belly on the blade, you're going to really like the Spiro. And this is less money than one of these. Something to keep your eyes on. Since we're doing bench made, here's the, the uh, full-size grip. <clears throat> and it's just a little bit smaller than a full-size grip, but not much. Not much. For those of you that are Spyderco fans... We'll go ahead and move it down a little bit. We'll put a PM2 on top of it. Yeah, so it's a little bit smaller than a PM2. Of course, you get the same amount of cutting surface, <laughs> just a lot less handle, but that's the kind of Spyderco thing. And since we're on Spydercos, here it is against the Para 3. Fits in nicely, right? It's about quarter inch shorter than the, uh, quarter inch longer, excuse me, than the Para 3. Again, it really comes down to price. At $125, this is an insanely good deal. And just a superb tool. It's really, it's really good. Do I wish he made more of them and they were a little easier to get? Of course. Uh, is it worth chasing if you've been thinking about one? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to borrow a page from my buddy Dirk. Uh, here it is against a full-size Sharpie. Sorry, Dirk. Couldn't help myself. But it's a good size comparison. Most people know how big these are. It is pokey enough to be pokey if you need it. It is, I wouldn't say it's a razor blade behind the edge, um, but it's definitely slicey. I've had it for about a week now. I've done all my basic cutting with it, and it's held an edge beautifully. And 
I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Stylistically, I think it is well done. It is very, very stonewashed on the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, on the carbon fiber, and the blade is a stonewash as well, so it's not going to show a lot of initial scuffs and scratches. I will say the one thing about this kind of uh, stonewash on titanium, as you can see on the pocket clip on my Sebenza here, the stonewash actually doesn't stop scratches from showing up, and in fact, it can make them more obvious. If you really ding this, it sh shows a shiny. Just something to be aware of. That's really nice. <laughs> oh, I'll put a link in the description to the Asher website. If you're interested, you can chase one down on your own. Let me go ahead and weigh it out for you here. I don't think it's necessarily a lightweight. Uh, there is some milling, which I'm not going to be able to show you very well, but on the inside of the scales, there is some milling. Uh, so he did do some weight reduction, which is a nice feature. And of course, it does have a steel lock bar insert, so you're not titanium on steel. Let's go ahead and see where we fall out. Yeah, so 3.7 for a, what is it, three and a quarter inch blade. Um, three, yeah, three and a quarter inch blade overall. It's a little bit over that ounce per inch that a lot of the hardcore EDC guys really look for, but I will say that it is wonderfully balanced. It just, I don't know, it feels light in hand, which matters, right? Um, the way that you, you know, like how thick it is here and how well the handle like fits into your palm, this all affects the way the knife feels. So even though it's not an ultralight, it still carries very well. And because of the lean design, the nice deep carry clip, which has good spring and good ramp, uh, it sits in the pocket really well too. Let's go ahead and get a look at how much of that S35 you get. <clears throat> yep, throw that out so it's clean. It's a reasonably thin slice, which means it does come down to a very nice edge, and that's one of the reasons why. We'll go back here. So yeah, you're looking at about two and a half millimeters. Uh, by way of example, a bug out, which has a much, or excuse me, a. Uh, Reptilian, which has a much thicker blade, you're coming in at almost three millimeters, right? So, noticeably thinner than something like this. Um, but again, knives aren't supposed to be pry tools. And if you start with thin blade stock, this is something Nick Shabazz goes on and on about, and he's not wrong. If you start with thin blade stock, it's easier to come down to a nice refined edge. So there you have it. That is the Asher Knives Spiro Tie Thumb Stud Edition, the newest iteration of the Spiro Knife from the folks at Asher Knives. I am very happy with it. I think you would be too. There will be a link to the Asher website in the description. I don't get anything from this, but I like to support a nice maker when I can. So um, take a look, see what you can find, and I hope you enjoyed this look at this knife. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.